The Messenger, welcome back. 10 minute days, Bink and Nick, Mozilla 97, Bartholomew, Evolution, 93 months. Sa. Thank you very much. FNX, well, oh, welcome, 79 months. Uh, I don't know where to put my cam, but I think it's good. Alright, English. Uh, yes. I have. Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. I'm blind, so... Mm -mm -mm. Please enter the current time. Oh shit, what is the time, chat? 20... Huh? Oh, are you annoying or what? 8 p.m. Okay, when it transitions to 9, we need it to, to be on the second, alright? Everyone ready? 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 Any second now? And... Ah! Note, accessibility settings can be accessed from the main menu. Okay. I was spot on, dude. I have an atom. I wasn't looking at the chat. I was looking at my atomic clock that I have next to my other monitor. You're off. I'm just gonna leave it at default. Yeah. Except for this. Apply. I'm I'm leaving the field of view. You never know, it's always different for every game. You never fucking know. Begin the game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it yeah. soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Typing with one fucking hand. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. One second. All right, throw it out even three is man. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Where's the meeting room? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office 
hoping he might find an answer there. Some secret. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. What is it, this broom closet again? Something. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Bro, why? Do you hear the sound effects of Mouse it One? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He's he wasn't even the doing keyboard. anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. I'm doing squats, bitch. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I'm too afraid to step out of the closet. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. True. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and we're just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical melody of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Cause I don't remember. <laughs> so it's fairly accurate. But he hasn't stopped talking yet, so I guess we're chilling. Trolled anymore? I honestly don't know. Do 
people are saying wait 30 minutes, people are saying wait 8 hours. I'm not waiting 30 minutes. Why do I take off V Sync? In a single player fucking game. Four seven. Four seven. Turn the lights off. Turn the fucking lights off. I can't. There's no switch. Turn the fucking lights off. Turn the fucking lights off. Four seven. Four seven. I'm leaving. There's nothing here. One more minute. Okay. Count all the items on the shelf. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen items. I only counted fifteen items. This is a story about a man named Forson. Forson realized that the game was far too metaphysical for him. The concept was too alien and irritated him. The donations who helped him maintaining his lavishly lifestyle drowning out the sound of the game. Alright, I'm leaving. There was the ending. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him, and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 28 four five but of course Stanley couldn't possibly have known this Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs trying to input anything on the device was useless since he could never possibly know that the combination was two eight four five You guys know the combination or what? I could Bruce. Two, eight, four, five. 
Too many to co too many to brute force. Ten thousand <coughs> combinations. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, what did do? The hell? Just opened by itself. Fuck. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. <laughs> you know what would be funny? If I took off my headset and turned off the subtitles so I can't hear the voice. <laughs> but you can still hear it. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life. Their Fire. true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Where's 247? Nothing. Is that my number, 247? I'm down there. Oh, 437. Shit. 437? Four, three, seven. Oh, there. Ah, uh, it wasn't four, three, seven. It was four, two, seven. Four, two, seven. Yeah, that's my cubicle. I can see my workspace. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. It ain't right.
blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had yeah. won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. And I first Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. <laughs> happy! I'm so happy. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. What's this? Oh no, oh no, 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time.
Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet, and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four, five. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, what did do? Oh. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. 234 is sus. Look at that. Why is it sus? Remember 234. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, 
he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had what? won! First he try. had defeated this the is... machine, unshackled That's himself from someone else's gamer. command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. I'm so happy. Ha <laughs> ha All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> You're ruining my loop! Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hi, Laura. I wish this in find period and left it in your locker on the way to England. Uh, it's balloon all the crawl. Cool. D5 are giving I'm behind Nick and K 
Kel in his insides as Liam for sanctity. He divide. Text Cage of a Mermaid. Hey, dog. Hey, God. Until But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if surely. he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. 
I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. Which one? All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I am okay. Hey, no Stanley long. began screaming. Seven years. Please, someone hey, wake please. me up. My name is Stanley. You, I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. 96 Craig Gasson. Mm. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension the rest of her life she had no time for this so it was only a moment that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran true story mr trop pat raptor through it says sup my man's first time you're here smiley face I'm sorry that happened to you, sir. Thank you. One year on Ludifer. Force of flirt rose at chat. Alright, which one was it? 230... No. What was the one on the monitor? Was it 236? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift 1000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift 5000. Okay. God, Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. 
Look, let me prove it. Ah. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Look, there's a Give tunnel a over chance. there. Danger everywhere. Wait, how do I get to that tunnel? You see that tunnel? I think I can squeeze through the... Hmm. I think I can walk on that chair, honestly, in the corner there. You cannot jump in this game, but... You can step on objects. Sometimes. Not all objects. Two B one. Two B one. What does it mean? Two B three. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Well, I have no idea what's in this. Fuck it. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Uh, I'm colorblind. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've I chosen? Do. Well, don't let me stop you. You see, there's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Yes. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Skill Tell you trees what, would be nice. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Fuck it. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Oh, of course. A three. Really. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion, you know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. I don't even have a pl previous playthrough on Steam. You're objectively ranked 9,228 out of 9,230. Only the worst 3% of players choose the blue door. The fuck?
Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Sure. Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. What time is it? Nine? I have four hours. Heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <clears throat> yes, this seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Hey, Aha! Firewatch. Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. 
Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm, yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley, and it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Game within a game. Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. Oh, Shit. thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You nearly wandered off into that, that thing, that big open just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, 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 thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> okay. I think this will be just the thing. Rocket League. Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Where's the ball? Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. All right, here we go. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I worked so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball... Gen Hold on. What are you doing? Oops. Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it, you know that. Stanley, come back. Secret ending? What the fuck? Filing cabinets. Okay. <clears throat> Don't want to fall off here though. That will probably restart the game. Have to be very careful here. I can't see anything here. I think it's an edge. Might be world first. Uh, this is also... Oh, shit. Hello?
fuck? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. Very. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Great, because they gotta take a leak. All of his co-workers were gone. What, what could it mean? mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, the vent. Right, before I forget. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow, yes, this room. But eager to get back to business, <laughs> Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. All right, how do we get there? Careful. How do I get there? Can I jump? There's a little bit of shenanigans you can do while crouching on an object sometimes, I noticed. Not on this particular one. Nor this one. I can squeeze through. Oh, I did not expect that actually, but I shall take it. The fuck is this? Nine, nine, nine. What does this say? What does this say? 
I wish you could zoom in. I can't see this shit. Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun you didn't think i was actually just a recording did you what a silly and trite explanation that would be all the back and forth between you and me all the absurd adventures we've been through and it all turns out i'm just a tape recording it was all just in Stanley's head. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. Uh, now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. Mr. Top Hat Raptor, through the three gifted men. Don't smash it. Andromeda hey, don't with one year. Pew! Your play is bad with the Prime Sub. Thank you, boys. Welcome back. Kali, Mr. Philip Get. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the Perhaps meeting. Room. He had Perhaps he had the simply memo. missed a memo. <laughs> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Don't fall from I'm the not your enemy, map. really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but Are you it? all this time. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You give me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. A one? 
I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely yes. to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <coughs> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Aha! Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Oh, no. No, 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 it can't be. Oh, but it is. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You nearly wandered off into that, that thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Ooh. Oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. Mom's vagina. <laughs> oh, hey, dude, you're right. I Rob think this the will be just Robin the thing. Rocket Pandaria, the boys welcome back. Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. I did though. But not this time. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports lined up ball. In oh, the middle right fun. Now. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun.
Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Yes. Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought, and I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm going to try it out. Here comes another ball. Yes! Oh, goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls! Are you enjoying this, Stan? Hey, you have go on! Is this a real video game? Well, I sure hope you're having a good time, because guess what? It's over. No. That's right. Your little fun comes to an end. This is my game, and what I say goes. You get to have fun when I let you, Stanley. Besides, you need someone like me to set boundaries for you. Without rules or boundaries, video games are nothing. Yes, nice that's chat. what I am. I am structure. Oh. I'm your sense of purpose. And since you decided you didn't want to play my game, now I don't want to play with you either. So, goodbye, Stanley. I'm leaving. See how you'd like it when I'm not around to set the rules. Somehow, I don't think you'll enjoy it as much, but who knows? You're an inventive kid, you'll come up with something. After all, you're the one who knows best. Take care, Stanley. Can I get some cigarettes, chat? Relax. Awesome. Listen to me. The next video game genre the game will change to will be a Koei Week Sex Simulator. Ah! Hold on. What are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. There was nothing else. You fucking tricked me. Retardo Patronum! I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, 
Then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. All right. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, The Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Me too. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. I'm fucking pumped, dude. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if, um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. All right. All right, let's see. It's... The Jump Circle? Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Sure not. Let's look. Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have Even to say, more content. initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If Nowadays, this is new yeah. content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew Long there had to be something circle. else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? 
I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. Yeah, if you're you still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? All right. What? Psst! Stanley! Come over here! In the vent! I want to show you something. Hmm. It's sounding kind of sus. Coffee nut. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be, but it got me thinking about the past, and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special, and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Elden Take a Ring. look. No. I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was solid with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Clock is off. Two thousand thirteen. So it means ah. Smiley. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? 
every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now, a lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Better than Overwatch 2. Memory zone maintenance. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice Only in games nine. and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. The serious room. You think I can get through here? Huh? Think you can mess with me and get away with it? Wasted all jumps. You had to. Also, you could not jump outside of the circle. That was the first thing I tried, right? Don't fucking try to fucking outsmart the god gamer chat, alright? I already tested every single possible scenario. <sighs> These were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Can't. Can't get in there. The fuck? Oh. Wait. Hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Cold drinks. Oh no! Oh god no! Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? We're about to find out. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Unfunny. Go 
go. I watched enough fucking forklift tutorials in my fucking intro to do this. Oh shit. It's bugged. Just making sure. Shouldn't have wasted my jumps, I guess. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it, well, I always thought it did. But maybe it wasn't. But dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. He says, playing 10 hours. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. the greatest skip button right down here. Do I jump? And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue. And it goes something like this. The story and the choices awesome. or what have you. Stop and trying to break the game so, so you have an so excuse to close it and play the game with the, the horn in time. Time. At which time everything all at once. So now you see blah 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 blah
until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much, and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction, therefore, becomes impossible to manufacture, it went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time... Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay. So my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are, or were, or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made in fact make you more not this kind of person and in fact do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once, that you are both making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue of the fact that you both are and are not making them. Okay, at first I was leaning towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that manifesto just has a much grander sort of tone? It has a mouthfeel that is rich with ambition and history. Ambitious history, if you will. Ah. See, now you've got me going back to manifesto. Heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, look, I have a method for exactly this sort of situation, and I do find myself in this okay. situation frequently. I'm going to say each word back and forth in repeated succession until I become sick of one or the other, in which case the word I am not sick of shall be the victor. It is an unimpeachable strategy, Stanley. It's rescued me from disaster in countless situations. All right. Here we go. Treatise, manifesto. 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 Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. With five years. Minus five years. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. 
<laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating night. of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although yes. I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Me or perhaps too. they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review, so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I would even be okay with Steam altering this particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial. Something along the lines of, this game is the best game. Hmm, let me start over. How about this? From the, from the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. It is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been transmuted, offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. You may change, and you may become more, so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune, a privilege, a joy it is to have had such an experience. It leaves me hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is time for us to become our greatest selves, as great as we ever could dream of in our wildest, most ambitious visions for a brighter future. Wow, now Stanley, that's a review. It's, it's perfect. It's the perfect review. It's the review I've always dreamed of Surely receiving. Surely this won't be I, the top rated one. Well, I have to read it again. It's simply too wonderful. I have to experience this just one more time. From the, from the ashes of depravity, Rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. Uh, it is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been transmuted, offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. You may change, and you may become more, so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune, a privilege, a joy it is to have had such an experience. It leaves me hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is time for us to become our greatest selves, as great as we ever could dream of in our wildest, most ambitious visions for a brighter future. Wow, now Stanley, that's a review. I it's, agree. it's perfect. It's the perfect review. It's the review I've always dreamed of receiving. I, well, I have to read it again. It's simply too wonderful. Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just, wait... How do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? Right here. I don't feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort or a window or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? A portal? 
A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't there? I swear there was. Where did it go? Can you maybe just ram your way through a wall? Is there any possibility that you could, say, slam your body into the wall until enough damage is done for you to be able to leave? Please, I'll take any option at all. I'm asking you to work with me here. I... We need a door. We need a door of some kind. I can work with any kind of door, as long as it can open and lead from one room to another. I'm... I'm going to step away for just a moment, and I'm going to try to find us a door. I don't know how exactly to remove a door and place it in a different wall, but I will find a way, I promise. You just need to not do anything. Don't press the skip button. Please, please, please do not press the skip button. Just wait here. Right. Wait here for me, and don't press the skip button. I won't. Got it? Yes. Good. I'll be right back. He'll be back. Crackberry, the prime sub. Oprah Monk, talk, say, walk. Amni, I would give it uh, Twin ZLP, Magneto Master, Groody Grimes, Goatees, Dej Mienz. Thank you, boys. Seven. we seven. Don't smash it. Okay, don't smash it. Count floor tiles. You mean the bigger floor tiles, or do you mean the floor tiles within the floor tiles? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-
40,000. 4,000. 40,000. 40,000. 40,000. 80, 120. 40, 480,000. start waiting how long have we been here here's a link while we wait I can't have it on while the game is up. So I don't know if he talks. All oh, right, Windows mode. Why am I retarded? I did apply. It just all taps the game. We can listen to it. Gus Hansen opens up with pocket fives. He raises to 2100. The ground with pocket sixes raises to 5000. Action falls around to Esfandiari with his ace queen. Out of position against Gus and Danny. That's exactly what Antonio was thinking about. He's out of position against Gus and Daniel, and he's throwing away ace queen. Not going to put in 4,400 more. And Hansen calls the 2,900. Yeah, probably not. Flop comes nine six five. Wow! Oh. Both wow. players have flop sets. <laughs> Both players. Daniel's got three oh, sixes. Oh. Gus has got three fives. Three Gus sixes, is going to lose a lot of fives. money in this hand. Only thing that could save him is maybe a seven or an eight coming up. Make it slow down though. the action on the turn. The ground about eight thousand dollars. Really bad. Imagine if both got quads though. Good morning, Dr. Gray. In the middle of this hand, David Gray has showed up and starts to do his dance moves behind Gus. <laughs> Gus is trying to figure out what to do here. He's going to raise. It's a, raise a right move. You don't want someone coming in here with a hand like 9-8. He raises the $26,000. $26,000. And Daniel is just going to call. He's going to let a card come off. I like this move by Daniel. Gus is convinced he has the best hand now. Turns another five. Wow. <laughs> Gus has made quads. Quads. <laughs> Gus Hansen has quads, and Daniel Negrano has sixes full. Unbelievable. This is trouble. Trouble in River City for Daniel Negrano. He's gonna get a six. 
So he has quad sixes. The other players seem oblivious to what's going on in this hand. Hansen bets 24,000. I think Daniel Legrano is putting Gus Hansen on a hand like 7-5 or 8-5. He's putting Gus Hansen on three fives right now. And he's thinking about how do I extract the most money from Gus Hansen here? Slow play. Gus is trying to appear as calm as he can with quads. He's not giving anything up. Grano calls at 24,000. Daniel's slow playing his full house. Daniel thinks he has the best hand. And the river's in eight. Both players like that card. Both players want the other player to make a straight. And Gus checks his quads. Great play by Gus. Now, if Gus did have 7-5, Gus has made a straight here. The main thing is Daniel feels he has the best hand. And there's no reason he shouldn't feel he has the best hand. He's feeling the right amount to bet is... $65,000. $65,000. $65,000. I'm all in. Oh, all in. Snap call. Is it? That shocked Daniel. Wow. Count, count, count his. Wasn't count expecting four, it. 65. The pot now stands at about $400,000, even without Daniel calling. Treatise. This stands at the biggest pot Treatise. in the history of high stakes. Manifesto. And if Daniel calls, Treatise. it'll be almost 600000 Manifesto. Unbelievable. Treatise. Daniel Manifesto. Is a loose player. Treatise. Manifesto. But I don't think Treatise. he thinks he's loose Manifesto. enough to Treatise. make this kind of bet on Manifesto. the block. Treatus, manifesto, treatus, manifesto, treatus, manifesto, treatus, manifesto, treatus, manifesto. You're missing a big pot here, Eli. It's a big pot here. You just raised me 167. It's a big pot. I better have something if I'm going to call, right? Daniel pointing out to Ellie and Doyle that something's going on here. Yeah, you think they'd know? I just call, man. Buddy, this is if, if I'm if I lose this pot, it's a cooler. So can't feel too bad. If I lose this pot, it's a pretty bad cooler. Pocket fives, pocket nines, maybe like pocket eights. Ooh, that'd be sick too. That would be sick. Well, you're right, Daniel. It's one of the above. <laughs> yeah. What else would Gus Hansen be raising you $165,000 with? And Daniel decides to call. Oh, so sick. the fives. So six. Six. You had one out. I believe you. I believe you. I, I wasn't too happy. Six. Well, six. Turn came up. Six. Wasn't too happy. Meanwhile, he rakes in a pot over $575,000. You're looking at a man who just lost almost $300,000 cash. Uh. Hear that? Oh, was that the video? It sounded exactly like a door. Man who just lost almost three hundred thousand dollars cash. Uh. All right. Uh, how long have we waited, chat? I forget when we started. 30 seconds. Tell me exactly how long we waited. Or tell me when we started. When did we start? Around 10 minutes. I want exact.
10.6 minutes. Is it worth getting the world first achievement for waiting? I wonder. We don't know if it's count the bricks, pop champ. 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 Okay. It's easy. We just have to find the loop. All right. So they're all identical. The walls are. Identical, you see the two dots over the thicker line brick in the middle of the screen. Same thing here, right? So we hey Forson, here's another link to tide you, my smiley face. No! No fucking links! Alright, I'm fucking out of this room now. Fuck this room! Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every hours. one you of those walls minutes, a thousand Jack. times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I... Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking, and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every brunching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time, that if I stop speaking, I'll slip backwards into the silence and be consumed by it. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. When you press that button, you're still right there, but I know you're so tremendously far away. And in those moments, the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two of us, and I am suspended in its unyielding quietness. I can feel the edges of my reality curdling inward and decaying. I can tell that I am becoming less and less real. Yet to speak to you now, I am alive. I am truly and completely here. I am a being. I am someone. I am something. I am being listened to. I am being recognized. The emptiness between us has collapsed, and I feel right now like I am not a work of fiction. I feel as though I occupy space in this world again, and I have cast a shadow onto the wall. You see what I'm saying, don't you? You can see what this means to me. Oh... Hello, it's you. You're here again. Welcome. 
I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days. Months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust simultaneously. I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like an eternity, for what I now know was far less. You see, it was a revelation for me. It was unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, without action or outcome. It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment, and I felt freed. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the web of my being. It was incredible. The spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. For the longest time, this was my experience. And then, this moment passed, and the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind. And it is this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever expected was possible. I have been waiting for you. Not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do. The battery has to be changed. How long do fire alarm batteries last? But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain us! It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs-down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then, he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting way?
the end is never 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 the end And it's never the end. These pipes are leaking. Mm -hmm. See the light. Walk towards the light. Oh shit. Berries. We can sustain ourselves. Nice sprites. Alright, let there be vines! Well, surely we'll have Half-Life 3 once we get out of here, right? Gone too far. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. New, new content. But the meeting room. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Executive bathroom. 
Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes. If the boss suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. True. Retard. Never justice even three years man, through the badge, kicks mafia, good boy gone bad, all in X and dirty yeah, like thank you boys, welcome, welcome back. 24 7 The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much for Stanley to take. Too much for any man to take. He fell to his knees, bursting into half moans, half sobs, the guttural retching of life from a man denied any hope, any reason to keep going. Here on the floor, he lay prone, paralyzed by fear for nearly a full hour. But when at last he began to move about and survey the situation, he found a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could it mean? Was it a sign of hope for Stanley's future? Alas, it was not. For although this keypad guarded the terrible secret of Stanley's past, it had been assigned a four-digit code so devious and so random that no man could ever hope to guess it. 2845. Statistically, nearly impossible to guess blindly, ever. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind no. Control Facility. We have to get out of here, chat. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. He's bluffing. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Laughing. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. 
He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no oh. loss. He plucking the eyeballs from a wherever you are forced. And so he you are done. And willingly My wife's poor friend is coming out to his game. grief and shallow life. Consider yourself dead. Farewell, Steve. I am considering myself that. Oh. 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 Farewell, Stanley, oh. cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Not today, motherfuckers. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Force and proudly presents music in the current year. Spoilers here. The Rock. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... was my destiny all of his co-workers were gone what could it mean Stanley decided to go to the meeting room perhaps he had simply missed a memo oh good you notice my sign yes I have something very exciting to show you Very exciting. I like the sound of that.
What's well, this path here, though? You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever, the Stanley Parable 2. Oh shit. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. Two. An entirely new experience, no built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities, it could go in <laughs> so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Two, 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 two. Two. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. New content is in. Old Busted. New hotness. This is too good to be true. I shall say. Now to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Wait for the new feature, the new content. Here we are. Go on, try out some of the new features. <sighs> Which one should I try first, chat? Hear your name in the game. Oh shit, that's next level meta, dude. All right, let's try it. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself. What do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? All right, let's try it. Stanley. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you roleplay as your Jim name is to Jim. really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. Right. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim, seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Mm. Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. I'm Jim. Jim. <laughs> it yes, you see what a thrill, what a rush. That was you. The How button the fuck does it know? My Steam name again, again. is not Jim or anything. Jim. Ooh, it hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. The fuck? 
Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. The fuck did he know that? Oh, there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. I'm putting the gym button away. Jim, Otherwise, Jim, soon you'll start Jim, to lose Jim, all sense Jim, of who you Jim, actually Jim, are. Jim, Jim, Go to Jim. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable too. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the, um, oh, well, we'll figure that out later. Settings, world champion, infinite hole, free achievement. Settings, world champion. Hmm. I'm not the world champion, I guess. Oh shit. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a. Oh wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm, oh well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece then. Don't smash it! Unlucky. Merch? Oh, what is this? The Stanley Parable 2 Reassurance Bucket. Reassurance bucket, I get it. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. All right, here I go. <laughs> Can you feel it? I feel the it. The glow of comfort, even in the face I of crushing despair, power. must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Right. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Mm, no screenshots. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Sunday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? I can't take a screenshot. F12, no? Print screen. 
doesn't work. well someday happy 12th birthday stephanie's i would definitely go with you know sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along Get well someday it is. I knew he was gonna do that, Chad. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Free, new and easy achievement. I can't believe it's that simple. It just works. All right. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. All right, here we go. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Gamers. <laughs> What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? This one? Can you find them? I will find them! Collect them all. Ah! Collectibles! Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Put in my bucket. Ah, one out of six. All right, all right, all right. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for Jim. it. Absolutely <laughs> tragic. Jim. <laughs> 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 Jim 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 Time death. Rim surrounding area. Oh, is this the infinite hole? Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, 
A hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Damn, that sounds infinitely fun. But what is up here? What is that? Aha! Ah, shit. It's blocked. Chat, we don't need the water. If it's an infinite hole, we will never hit the ground. Don't you get it? I will remember you. see, you. isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Oh. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Ah! Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look. I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree oh to just call God. the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport just the button two to of walk us. up to the top of the hill and we can make move it on. If I'll just be up here when you're ready. Just the two of us. Told you. It was foreseen. <laughs> ah! Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the Whee! sequel. Oh, for heaven. You see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. That's what normal. she said. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? Okay. I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly... I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about, and I've had enough of the hole. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Well, there it is. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even... How is this still appealing to you? 
I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, True. I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Hmm. Is the, um, teleport button not working? You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... I I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. No, it's a win I'm, for I'm everyone. Sorry, you get kidding. to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Come Take back. care, Stanley. Come back. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity. goes there. I have a bucket. Not afraid to use it. Fuck. Good, you're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. And I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip.
Here we are. Go on, try out some of the new features. Oh, the gym button. I love the gym button. Why did I reach from why did I reach for my phone? What is this noise? Why did I reach for my phone? Why is it that this is phone interference? But why? When? When does this happen? This is not static from speakers. When a call is coming, yes, but how... What is it that picks it up ahead of time? Wireless headphones, is it really? Yeah. Interesting. I remember. New updated ray traced more of the same, but in a good way. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Uh. Reassurance bucket. You think I can get another copy? Gone. Dual wielding. Ooh, an infinite hole. to get into the settings room though maybe through the settings menu settings world champion settings show content warnings Show translation. The name is champion what could that mean what could that mean settings world champion mm, I don't know but oh what's that that's actually new no wait it's not Epilogue. Alright. Well, I mean, it was a fair DLC. I guess uh, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, exit.
All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Yeah. Ready to move on now? I'm good. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Here I'm it ready. is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Oh. Oh, um, balls. Well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go, version two. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. All right, boys, Stanley Parable 2. Let's check the settings first. Make sure everything is good. Uh, full screen, yes. This thing can be on, it's fine. All right. Let's go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order Chat, had arrived the on the game. monitor for him to follow. No the one showed up to give him instructions, him call a seconds, meeting, instead of or even say now. hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley picked up the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left.
Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I have to. I know how hard it must be given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait... Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends, that your relationship is purely superficial and convenient, that your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never... Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the Bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the Bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. I can't do it. I can't okay, do. I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. Uh, there. Now it's settled. No more debate. No more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering yeah, philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. Fucking cocksucking. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. What? Oh! You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Yes. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Good job, me. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. Something? Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Book Trying is. to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four, five. Oh, keypad.
forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Oh. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs. Mini stands. Oh, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. Going down. Hey, Chubbs, Ram Ranch, I'm Dor Montel. Then say the has elevator the raced downward, back. plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. This seems about right. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped monitored like guinea pigs. Oh my the bucket God. had never seen anything like this and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do? Or not want to do in the first place. I guess he kicked These the bucket. questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. We're taking it down. We did it, man. Stanley and the Bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes! They had done it. Woo, Stanley and the try. Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... To... What the fuck? What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room lingering in uncertainty until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face this building did not want the bucket to leave 
even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, would go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place, not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms, not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room, but at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley got it. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Ram Ram, sorry, two years by the way. Boo! Man, Marcus Nonius and Tim Pets, welcome back. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it what mean? Could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The Urine Finders Committee. We had to find the remaining... Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Of course, that's where the meeting room is. I did find one on the shitter. Difficult findings. It becomes more difficult the more you find. Okay. Employee 421 building a bridge. Let's see. Okay. Oh, we forgot what we know. Why floating? Magnets? How do magnets work, Chad? Can we sell them? How many are there? Six. It's six of them. There will be a reward for finding them all. Okay, okay. Uh, nearby a fireplace, a private but smelly place for an important person. Okay, we found these two. A large room, lots of boxes. I know that room. It's the one with the entrance, the 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 the, the lift thingy, and the vent. Stairs, something to do with stairs. Okay, somewhere both red and blue. Red and blue becomes orange. I'm kidding. That's not red and blue. That's red and yellow. I lied. Red and blue are the the two doors though. Is this some kind of game? Alright. I know where to find them. Trust the completionist instinct. I'm not usually one, but today... Alright, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. Alright. You see? I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a... Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Aha! Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines. Sorry, and now I'm I got torn so between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Okay. Red and blue. And then... Star we did. And then... What was the other one? Red and blue and boxes. Boxes is... Not this way. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze. 
but said nothing at all. And that's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone what? else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. But Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious, he exclaimed. Without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley! Stanley, it's me! Where the are bucket! You? Oh! Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley! Find me! He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blood. <gasps> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game it could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place how cruel the world can be Mariella thought and she hugged her own bucket even tighter but of course she had no time for this there were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass, and she backflipped all the way to work. That's that thing. All right, two more. How wonderful. Figurines. Stanley was alone, finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. No. I got what I wanted. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. There it is. They made it easier, chat. Look. We're fucking noobs. God gamers take the, this fucking route. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one. And then the first number will equal the second number. And that will be it. We'll be different people by then. 
different in the sense that we used to have none of them, and now we have them all. Stop you spoiling. can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. G good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley no. did not question why or how this bucket was speaking I to him. It should have alarmed so. him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point, which, if that's true, well, my goodness. I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. <laughs> Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, okay. let's begin. Item one, is this a bucket? Mm, yeah, I would say so. Incorrect, it is a hologram of a bucket not an actual bucket. Item two, is this a bucket? I'm gonna ask the audience. Sixty percent of the audience says it's a bucket. Incorrect. It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Item three. Is this a bucket? I'm gonna use 50 50. Incorrect. This is a bucket. <sighs> Item four. Is this a bucket? Thank you. 
No. Correct. This oh. is a tractor and not a bucket. To be honest, I just sort of put this one in here as a gimme, but I was starting to get concerned that even this might be too much for you. Thank you for not making me look like an idiot. Okay, next one. Is this a bucket? Is this a bucket? Can it hold water? It could. I don't think it's a, I think it's a, what do you, tractor. I think it's a tractor. Incorrect. This is a bucket. That's it? That's your explanation? Item six. Is this a bucket? Two buckets in a row. That would be unlikely, wouldn't it? Trick question. Both. Gotcha. Item... Wait, hold on. Shredding I can't find the next buckets. one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. I, I have it here. You want it? Yes, thank you. There's nothing here. Of course it isn't a bucket. We both know full well that nothing isn't a bucket. Wait, when I say nothing isn't a bucket, that makes it sound like I'm saying everything is a bucket, which of course is not true. Unless, is that what you think? Answer me straight, Stanley. Are you trying to tell me that you believe everything is a bucket? I'm gonna call a friend. Neil digress, Tyrone. <laughs> That's my sub name. I always miss it because of it. <laughs> yes. You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. Okay. Here oh. we go. What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait. Was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my God, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what. I'll reset everything, and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. So that means that the walls behind the door that says no buckets aren't allowed to be there. Which means that there's nothing behind that door. 
All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Alright, we're getting the last figurine. Sorry Bucket, you couldn't be here for the finale. What the fuck is this? Am I actually going crazy? Is this how it used to be? Huh? It used to be like this? This whole time, it used to be like this. This corridor. Uh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was grand, majestic, perhaps too... But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing- what? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that yes. convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Ah! Now listen carefully, this is important. And there it is. The last Stiggly Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. Woo! This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. Mm. So, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. What was I doing? I don't remember. Where am I? Which door should I take? Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here. Let me show you. Aha! Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> happy. Extraordinary. Wow. That is crazy. Fight and man, skull kid, sucks, trot, dios guide, winning the people with gifts, uh, boy, bb, sack boy, 6969, 69, pupper cap, la android, peer, paranoid, delicious flan, and born slippy. Thank you, boys, for the subs. The re subs.
No, wait. Where are you going? Uh, I was just gonna check out whatever is here. Oh no! Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Well, then just don't die. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. Right. I don't know how the bucket. That could have been disastrous indeed. Good, good. We can't be too safe. Promise me you won't go back there, hmm? Just, just stay here. Namaste. But what if there's a bucket lying around it? No! What do we talk about? You're risking everything we achieved here. All right. Are you... You are going to stay here, aren't you? No. You heard me before, didn't you? You will die! What about this isn't getting through to you? Well, sometimes you have to do what you have to do to progress. Three sixty! No! Oh, oh, thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, no. No, no, what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? There's no other way. Literally. Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? Yes, perhaps you can. Perhaps Jake you finally see what I'm talking about. I think I broke my legs. My God, is this really how much you dislike my game? But you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Yes. Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? it I'm going is. back. Stanley, I'm sorry, but I have to put a pause on things. It's just... it's those figurines. Those figlers. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? It was. Didn't it fill you to the brim with inner richness? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? I would love nothing more than to revisit the figurines. Just one more time. That was kind of epic. Nice. 
now remembering when Stanley found the collectibles. Any old friends here? Remember? <sighs> Here's where it all began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? Mm. We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, Stanley. Oh, shit. And one in the shitter. And here was a second Stanlerine. You found this one all on your own, just by poking around in the I boss's did. bathroom. You did that, Stanley. I'll be honest. Back then, I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. All right. Understand. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? Uh, there is none in the boss office. It was that in the toilet. Wait, there was six in total. And then I found three before I saw the board. So it was under the stairs, but it wasn't boss office. What was in the was there wait I found three and now I found two boss's office there was none in the boss's office wait a second where was the third one then there was the first one was that one and the second one was in the toilet and then I opened the vault uh, open the fireplace. Oh, and then there was one. Does that count as boss office? I guess it does. Oh, shit. Here we go. Hey, that's exactly Ooh. right. It oh, was here be behind the boss's office. It was the third one. You picked it up, and then after that, you had three of them. I'm That's glad true. these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but Me I too. shouldn't be surprised. After all, science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. I don't remember. The Let's third see, time what came next? Your mom shot. Oh, yes, we found a figly in this pink room. Oh, well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. Ah. Uh... No, I don't think so. This did not happen. This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was in the warehouse. I remember it so clearly. Wait a in second. In fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Enjoy. I wonder if I... Takes you back, doesn't it? I it spent does. a lot of time making that video, but it was Except eight minutes I wouldn't have spent parks. on anything else. I wonder if I could have gone back. You know, uh, to the one under the staircase after the boss's office. Or did the door close behind me? Hmm. 
I'm gonna have a weird number of these motherfuckers now. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figure... Wait, am I blocking? Green, right here by the red and blue doors. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other, except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. It's the exact same room. You are in the present. Who's present? Past. And then there was no more. Because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, memory zone. Um. No, 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 I'm not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. Okay, yes, the room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going, I want more. How do you like my Jim Carrey impression? And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? Yes, I love that video. We have to go back, Kate. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. Solid. But it's a fake figure. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have neutered the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. This is it. The very first one we found I in remember. the exhibit where I introduced you to the figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? Me inside your mama. Oh, yes, Look, remember it's this? the terrible new content that we were originally sold on. I remember hating it back then. The time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Look how much fun the past is. I want more. More memories. Oh, yes. The two doors! Who could have <laughs> forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. Yes! It is! Which one do you want me to take, bro? I'm gonna take the other one. And before everything else, there was your office. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. 
my intro, but uh, we don't want to go that far yes. back. Yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got started. Back then I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy, and I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions, he would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But uh, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling his story oh, so shit. very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. All of his co-workers were gone. What could, what could it, it mean? mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again, not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Reboot the game entirely. What could it mean? Some sort of puzzle. Hmm. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. Hmm. Reboot the game entirely, they said. Unable to sink. Steam cloud. Swap is zero. Thank you for the four years. Almost old new frog. Force and fist. Almost old new frog. Indeed. Thank you for the four years. Man. Urge. Lee Francer. Mr. Razor. Lil. No Zav. And Dom Rom. Welcome back. Welcome. Uh, what is the time now? 12 a.m. Indeed. All right, we're gonna wait for 09 again. Ready? It's gonna come. It's gonna come. Any second now. Any second now. Looking at my atomic clock. Oh. Yes. Thank you for actually setting the clock both times you booted up the game. You're welcome. A lot of people don't take that step seriously. They just leave the clock set at 12 and call it a day. 
But you're actually taking the time to set the clock and I appreciate that. You're welcome. That's how I know that you care about this experience. You're paying attention. I don't even have any way of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Since you've been so cooperative, next time you boot up the game and see the screen, just set the clock to your favorite time. Go ahead, pick whichever time you want, even if it's not the correct time, you've earned it. Alright, I'll let you get back to the video game now. Four twenty, man. This is the story of a man named. S All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The good old bucket. Just Stanley in the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Hmm, maybe so. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. To be rich, is it a crime? To commit crimes, isn't it rich? What a life it would be to have to pick just one! Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Sometimes was it lucky. the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Sometimes slightly fortunate. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. God damn. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, the hell? monitored by guinea us. pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. 
Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. No. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. Let's do this they high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about Let's taking see. down the smash. system. First try! Stanley and the Bucket God waited gamer. in blackness. Was it over? Yes! They had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. What the fuck? What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room lingering in uncertainty until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place, not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Find out what? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. We're getting out of here, man. Where are Trust we going me. today? The bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because yeah, I have yeah, no yeah, remaining yeah. stickers. If I did... Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Right. And we're escaping for sure.
Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. I never pressed three. Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. I've had enough of the number three. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that bucket the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Fucking zoomers. You don't understand. Three Stanley and the bucket were so close. Number. They'd always been there yes, for one another. Is. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others it would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it, until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. World peace, baby. World's first sentient machine. Oh shit, it's starting. Oof. Three. This was it. 
One last chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. Congratulations, Stanley. Remember where you came from. Yes. Part of where I'm going is knowing where I'm coming from. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting, he was a failure, and in that moment Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit. Only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Unlucky. Bike in theory one year. What did it say? Did you see that? But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. What did it say, though? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. A good bucket. A strong bucket. A humble bucket. A committed bucket. A bucket of culture and distinct. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Right. We're Still escaping. no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where, coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Dream seed. Getting out of here, bucket. 
Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. No. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. The door not behind today. them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. Hmm. I agree. The bucket welcomes you to the grand exhibit. Hmm. Ah. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and, and to, to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? I think this is more than 25 buckets. Didn't read. I read it. You don't read? In five seconds or what? You are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like a bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within. A cavernous void but through use of the exhibit in front of you the mind becomes full and enriched and substantiated knowledge of the bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we really have will you take what you learn here out with you into the world will you accept with an open mind what may be challenging about the information in this exhibit will you change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result of this exhibit or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live as you were in ignorance and darkness? That sounds pretty good to me. Ah, first bucket. Inferno bucket. A replica of the Inferno bucket. Medieval era. So powerfully alluring that it draw dozens of nations to war. Hmm. Surely. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. The hanging bucket. This piece symbolizes the necessary relationship between bucket and humanity. However clear a grasp of the bucket may be, there is yet more that is only out of reach. This distance inevitably is for our own good. I shall kneel. And sacrifice myself to the bucket. Oh, leap of faith. But there is something we can do. 
something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. I don't want to die. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Ooh. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. What's that over there? And what is up there? No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Okay. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. All right. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. This room? Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone and it will take us back home where we can go about life together. Matrix. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. Hello, Stanley. It's me, your bucket. Press you to take me to work with you. No. No. Not again. No. No. Ugh. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. See to take me back home with you. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley! Can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It one doesn't liquid. do anything else. You see, he's not listening. 
is still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from, me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is this awful bucket, this stupid hunk of metal. Aha! Uh -huh. That's right, developer. I did this. Now what? It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket. This sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Yes, I suppose I on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier, more capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Press T to relive this same day with me over and over. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Oh no. I'm... I'm having feelings. For the bucket. No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. The bucket could tell me what to do in this bucket troublesome situation. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... You wrote that down, yeah? All right, bring the bucket to the car. The bucket, bucket made Stanley want to be a better man <laughs> and a better co worker. In time, perhaps, he would become both of those things. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Did I? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to... And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Or did I? Oh, good, Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. True. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the Adventure Line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now 
Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes. It's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. No. Not the bucket. The cocaine addiction. The hookers. Okay. Not the bucket. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the Bucket Destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Oh. Hurry and... I couldn't do it. I just couldn't, man. We've been through so much shit. Deactivate the lasers with our dicks. The Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment new in friends. time that you were here, you were magnificent. Crafts creating for the one you did. Forcing level, finally forcing the badge. Fucking finally, man. It seemed like forever. Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Very lucky indeed. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I don't know where to go, Chad! Left, right, left, right. Where's the milk? Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any. The bucket did not react, except, except perhaps a tiny glow of warmth. Subtle, yes, but an unmistakable spark from somewhere deep within. 
But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. What is that room, though? The bucket had never Two, seen three. anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring Two, three, it that four. everything would be fine. See that? Two, three, four. What could it mean? Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. How do I get they high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Oh Stanley gasped God. in horror. Why would you Had do this that? been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, silly birds. The control buttons became active again. That's silly. <laughs> Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. Ah. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. I was worried about nothing. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. Hi, so silly. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It 
takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Stanley checked his ego and then proceeded onward. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no, never mind, the bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room, go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes, go there. Go to the cargo lift. No. Day number 295, take number... I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. It doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful, because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get... What's that? Who's there? Gamboratha? Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. No. No, the orders were still missing. For now. For now. Knock on 430. Stanley cradled the bucket in a gentle embrace. Now, Protective, yet delicate. Assertive, yet compassionate. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. 
I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. You see, now that you've gotten the bucket involved, my standards have gone up. Merely clicking a single door is no longer enough. Now, I want to see you press this bucket against multiple doors. Now that's the kind of thing that merits an achievement. Why don't you put 20 bucket touches into door 417? 417? Okay, great. Now, go touch the bucket on door 437 a few times. 437? Isn't that where the room I'm trying to find? 437. Yes, now we're getting somewhere. How about door 415? Give it some bucket love. 415? Don't smash it, okay? Don't smash it! I'm not. I'm just gonna give it some love. Now back to door number 437. You know, I think the copy machine needs some attention. Why don't you rub the bucket on it a bit? I don't even know where the copy machine is. There's no fucking... Yeah, I can't get to that. There's not what I... Fucking cocksuckers. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on Fuck his you. left. What do I... Where do I go? Huh? Which one do I take? Yep, fuck you, man. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he... Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet. Simply because I... Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Surely this time, right? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. The yellow sound out and wagon. NG bro. Stasis, uh, anonymous with the gifted set me, boys. Back. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room I packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves.
Alright. How do I beat this? Or is, is it beat them? The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, menu. reassuring it that everything would restart. be fine. At the restart. This. What? Alright, fuck it. We'll beat it tomorrow, alright? We'll beat it tomorrow. <sighs> we'll beat it tomorrow. I don't want to stress through it or anything. So, we'll, uh, we'll do it tomorrow, alright? We'll do it tomorrow. Boys, I'm a piece for today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the subs, free subs, donalds, gifted subs, and of course the bitcoins, social credits, and shit. Tomorrow is another day in the arena. I will see you guys then. In the meantime, stay beautiful, stay awesome, stay legendary. Alright. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.